Hey guys, how you doing? This is Bandit Dave. Uh, believe it or not, I'm actually back in the garage uh, on my vacation and working on the Cutlass. I wanted to do an update video for the um, big brake kit on the rear. I finally had a chance to get over and actually do some work with it. I wanted to do some recapping of the parts. I want to just kind of rush through it um, and uh, go through what's going on on the uh, rear end there. It's, it's, it's a duplicate of, of, the, of the same stuff for the driver's side. And I'll try to mention the things I remember. But it is pretty straightforward. I just wanted to go through some of the things. It includes a C5 uh, caliper, um, PBR caliper. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. C5 rear. Uh, and I got the C5 Z06 fronts, Z06 rear on it. And the kit comes with, and I'm going to try to bring it up so that you guys can actually see it. So it uh, comes with a bracket, to the caliper bracket. Um, and this is an adapter bracket to mount it onto the uh, rear end housing. And um, I'll actually show you uh, what has to change on there. But it's, it is very straightforward. This is the caliper bolts. Um, these two bolts mount the, and I'll, and I'll, I'll point it out in a bit more detail uh, on the uh, um, housing itself, on the um, car itself. But these two bolts hold the um, this bracket on the car like this. So, and I'll, and I'll point it out in a little bit more detail, but this here, and then the caliper bolts like this. And I'll show, you know, like this, and I'll show the assembled housing. But uh, those two hold the caliper bracket in place. You'll get six of these per side. Um, is that right? Yeah, six six of these per side, and two of them go on the bottom of the adapter bracket to hold the um, whole caliper assembly on, and then the other four go to bolt this to that adapter bracket. Um, and then the rest is just some spacers. Um, there's actually some larger washers. There. One is already on the car there, and then you get a ton of washers, uh, 9 sixteenths. Um, and these I want to point out on the car because this is actually critical because these, you get a whole lot of these and then and when you see them you're kind of like, why in the hell I get these? But the thing that kind of bummed me out is I did not get good uh, directions with the kit. It was from Core 3. Tobin's awesome dude. Uh, I have no, nothing but good things to say about him. Great prices. Um, and this this will actually be applicable to at, at least, I know, um, I'm going to say 82 through 88 G bodies, so your Cutlasses, your Monte Carlos, your Regals, um, Grand Prix, um, but check Core 3 sites just to be 100% um, sure. But um, this this will work on all them, and, and I'll and I'll recap the front when I get a chance when I actually flip the car back around and bring it back in the front way. I'm also going to try to clean up the garage here a little bit more. I've been saying that for how many freaking weeks, but I've been uh, unfortunately been really sick, but. Um, Inside, apparently there's something going around here, but this guy here is the rear disc. I've got one of them opened over there. I just don't feel like taking that out right now. The kit's great. I mean, it gives you all of the hoses and everything. So the hoses for the rear. Um, I've got, I mentioned in another video laying somewhere around here. I've got all the brake line uh, for the car. Actually, my, yeah, it's over there. But uh, let me grab you, let me take you over there and we'll go take a look over on, on the car. So I apologize for the movement, but i uh, bring you over here. And so, so here you go. Here's, you can see, here's the disc. Uh, it's a little, got a little bit of fingerprints on it for me, but what, one thing I do recommend you do, um, this has been sitting for a while, so I will, I will clean this again, but I have some, uh, actually it's over here, I'll bring, ooh, sorry, I'm walking you guys around here a lot, but uh, I use this prep all spray on the disc um this stuff is you can get it at your paint supply places and i think you can actually even get it from like like pet boys and things like that but um auto zone etc so i i did a video of this before let me get this so i can get a little bit better light on the subject here see if i can get anything a little bit better here apologize see you know let me try this and slide this in give it another shot there you go, that's a little bit better. Hopefully the lighting's decent enough on this for you guys, but. So, this bracket right here, this is the existing piece from the, uh, this is actually this rear end. Ooh, that's actually, you know what, that's actually something to mention that I forgot to mention before. This is a Buick Grand National eight and a half rear end. 
That's very, very important <laughs> for, for when I ordered the kit. Um, I know that Tobin for and Core 3 sells those, so you got to be careful. Uh, I apologize if I didn't mention that before, but um, you can see down here, here's all the original brake parts. It sucks because this thing was actually in great shape. Um, you can see there's like tons of meat left on it, and uh, you can see I had redone these brakes, you know, nine years ago, but it was a drag car. <laughs> so, so, you know, it got used maybe 30, 40 times. <laughs> maybe it was 100 times, something like that. I got quite a few, uh, pink, uh, quite a few uh, time slips and pink slips. There you go. But you can see, it, you know, I had airbag suspension under there, and um, it, uh, so, so for this... Oh, and you can see there's the uh, caliper assembled here. So just to give you a little recap, these bolts here, and I'll and I'll install this. So what I'll do is I'll probably stop the camera and clip a video in so you can see it a little bit better. But um, so this bracket right here is from the Grand National rear end. Uh, this comes with it. What you're going to have to do, and I tried to avoid it um, because I want to be a lazy uh, piece of duty, is... Um, gonna have to pull these axles out so i did that it's very straightforward so these these come out and why do you have to do that because these right here this bolt in this bottom part of the bracket here has to be drilled out and right now i don't remember exactly which size drill bit i used because it was so long ago but um it's pretty straightforward you just size it up for the for these 9 16 bolts just enough for clearance to get through there and you know the reason why you have to do that is these adapter brackets have to be mounted to the um sorry here i'm just trying to get the picture back on i apologize that 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 light is very very drowning you out there hold on let me let me see if i'm just gonna see if i can rearrange this here a little bit better for you see if we can get a little bit better light i apologize for the slight delay here uh i can't find a good spot to get this thing to stick so give me one second here right in my face let's try this again all right, let's see if we can get that to stick. How's that? It's not as horrible, but uh, what I'll probably do is try to shield it a little bit. But this bracket right here, and here we go. Let me get my hand in the way here. Is the adapter bracket comes with the Core Three kit, and um, this this bracket comes around and it bolts in two spots down at the bottom. One over here. Come up from underneath. You see. Sorry for the seasickness. There's one right here, and then there's another one right here is the second spot for it. And this holds, and then right here is a big monster bracket. And you may have to clearance it a little bit, but it's really not that bad. Um, and um, this will hold that bracket in place. Now, I had mentioned something previously. When you take this off, some of these surfaces are not um, coplanar. So down here, I had to put two and I've got this little bucket down here. So they give you a lot of washers in here with it. Uh, you have to put, it for, for, for my particular case, two of these washers in right here. And on the other side, same spot. One of these washers here. And just, you know, sandwich it in. You tighten it down. That holds this bracket on. Then for this, I just have this bracket in place here. Nothing too fancy here. It's just a washer on either side, and then I sandwich it in. And let me take you around the back here so you can see it a little bit better. But that'll give you a view of how I uh, fastened it here. And I, I'm, I'm hopefully not making you guys seasick with this, but I wanted to give you a little bit better documentation of how this uh, how this whole thing goes together. And then from, from this point, what, what you end up doing is, and there's a re some reasoning behind why I did that, um, originally, I had an extra one of these washers here and four washers spacing this out to bring this whole thing out. And that was all fine and dandy, except this was unbelievably close to the rotor when it was on the car. So what I'm doing now is I'm reversing the location of that washer right there that you see on this guy. And I'm putting that to space out this caliper bracket. So what that'll actually do is keep this from... from um, um, I apologize with lost for words here. So uh, it'll keep this guy from scraping on the back side of the rotor. So I'm going to install this caliper bracket. Um, one of the things I actually did before Goof didn't realize it, uh, my own fault, um, is you, got, you have to install these clips prior to uh, putting it on there because then you won't be able to actually retain your uh, brake pads. So, um, 
since I'm um, in the process of trying to do that right now, what I'm going to do is put them in, and there's like these little clips that have to come in from the back side. So uh, I'm going to fumble around with that for a little bit and see if I can get this uh, bad boy to click in here properly. So I think that's about what we want. Now we slide them in like that. That, boom, and then you get a click. So that slides in. If you can see closely back in here, and I'm going to probably just use these, uh, um, yeah, see, they're down in there pretty well, so I don't see that being an issue with that coming out or anything like that, but they're, they're in there quite well. So you can see that's buried in there, and it's just a repeat. Same thing on the other side. So uh, grab the other one. And you take this guy, you bring, I brought it in on a little bit of an angle so you can kind of pocket it in and then you kind of lift it up and slide it in there like that. And now you probably didn't see any of that because I was probably blocking it like a moron, but uh, clicks in pretty straightforward. If you look in here, I actually have a little bit of grease in there. That's what they ask you to do that uh, as part of the install procedure. So that, that, that basically finishes off this guy. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rest this down here for a second. And uh, we'll go through, probably speed this thing up a little bit. But I'm also going to put a little bit of uh, blue um, thread locker on here as well. Because uh, once these guys are on, they should be done being put on. So I apologize if I'm giving you a lot of clips action here. But um, I don't really want to put this thing together any more time. Or take this thing apart any more times than I already have. is a, um, I'll just call it a spring, uh, to basically preload the pads down to make sure that they're not rattling around. So, um, this guy got them there, I got that on there, I don't think there's really anything else, so what we'll do is we're going to slide these over, we're going to slide the caliper over, we'll slide these through, and um, we'll end up tightening it up. So we'll put these guys in, so you can't see this, but you got these guys right here, and these will go in first, back side of the caliper bracket, and uh, there we go. So, um, what I'll do is let me grab this one in here so you can see. So now if you're seeing down here, you can see how I've got them installed. And I'm just going to, uh, boy, it's, I apologize if the light is too bad for you guys, but you can kind of see on the back side here what I'm dealing with. Let me just put this caliper down for a second see if I can shield this light a little bit here. There we go. You can see where those bolts are right here. Where those uh, are these guys slide in the back of the caliper bracket. You can see here where the caliper bracket is located with the two pads. Okay, I'm going to back up here. And hopefully you don't fall. You can still see what I'm doing. Slide this back. Okay. And now we'll take this guy. And one of the things to note, this is the air bleed. For it, that has to be on the upper side of the caliper. So, slide this guy in, lock her in, and then I'm going to grab a couple of these bolts here. These are little guys that go through the caliper bracket. I just want to bend these, these down a little bit because for some reason they're not really doing a good job of staying in place when I go to mount the darn thing. So I'm going to bend these down a little. Makes it a little harder for it to be taken out later. But I don't give a shit because 
it's going to make the initial assembly. Now the damn thing is not falling out anymore. Look at me. I'm smart. All right, let's try that again. So push the, uh, the uh, pads up against it. Push the bolts in. Kind of wrap it forward a little bit. And open sesame. Push that that way. Push that that way. There we go. There we go. Can hand thread that one in. Grab the other one. Push that forward a little bit. Rock that baby into place. There we go. All right. So I will spare you the the tightening of these, but we go. We can bring this in. I'll show you what we're dealing with here. Move this light so you can get a little better view here. Okay, coming down from the top, from the back here, you can see the bolts hold on the caliper. You can see all the clearance that we have here. You can see the clearance, so you can get a little bit better light there. You have clearance on both sides of the caliper bracket for the for the brake so it can rotate freely. So this is the way it was supposed to be, um, but didn't get it right the first time. So, um, boo, shining right in your face. So what I will do, I'm going to kill this for now because we don't need this anymore. So that's, that's about it. Um, so this guy is installed, and you can see here, rotates freely. I don't want to rotate it over too much just because I've got the diff. Uh, it just fell in there. <laughs> and you can see I've got the differential. I don't know if you can see it too well back there, but I got the differential opened up. So I got to put a cover on that. But there she is. So that's it. You know, I will go through, make sure everything's all nice and pretty and edited, but that helps you understand what you have to do for this. It's pretty straightforward. It really is not that hard. Other than having to drill those two um, holes in the initial rear end uh, bracket, to open them up a little bit for the bolts, it's, it is very straightforward. The hardest part about this is figuring out the um, sequence of the washers for spacing. And that's really a trial by error type of thing, but um, hopefully mine will help you out. Um, it's a repeat on the other side. Again, you just gotta make sure you know which side your caliper is supposed to be on. But um, yep, straightforward. I'll do some more videos of the um, suspension on here. And uh, hopefully you enjoy it. Like, comment, subscribe, ask me any more questions. I'm going to be doing a lot more with the uh, Cutlass in the next uh, few uh, weeks. Um, trying to get back in here and doing some work on her. And um, do the rear suspension, finish up the uh, rear, and then flip around.